you own a Shopify brand or dropship or whatever, it's very important that you understand the post-purchase journey because if you don't, you're going to be losing out on a ton of lifetime value. And as a result, if you're thinking about exiting your brand, it's going to fuck your multiple massively. Right? So it's really important you understand this, so watch till the end of the video where I'm going to show you how to think about the post-purchase process, how you can deliver the unboxing experience, and also how to think about it from a content perspective, okay? Super useful stuff. Now, if you're wondering who I am and why am I qualified to talk about this, I run a retention agency, but we've been around for three years. I've done media buying and everything else with regards to D2C. So I have a ton of experience. We've done over 30 million in revenue for brands. So let's get into it. Quick definition about the post-purchase journey. It's literally everything that happens after someone swipes their credit card and the payment gets processed. It's everything after that. And you have to understand the thing that you're probably fucking up on, and most marketers do this, by the way, is most marketers stop selling someone as soon as someone buys. That's basically the equivalent of putting in a shit ton of effort, like shaving, you know, spraying some cologne and stuff for the first day, and then on the second day, just looking totally fucking homeless. So I'm going to show you in this video how to do post-purchase properly. And if I could sum everything up, you got to think about it like this, right? During the post-purchase journey, you got to ask yourself, what if I just 10x the price of my item? Let's say you charge, I don't know, $20 for a supplement or like a vitamin C pill, right? What if you started charging $200? What would you need to do from a service perspective to make the customer not feel like they're getting ripped off? Super important, right? Because you can't create a better product. That's the constraint you're going around. So how can you still make it feel like a good deal, even if you 10x the price? Obviously, this is just a thought experiment, but I'll break down exactly the two stages of the post-purchase journey, which is the unboxing, very, very big lever that you can pull, and also the type of content you can actually deliver to the customer. So let's talk about the unboxing. So are you like Cartier from a boxing perspective? Or you like me, and this is basically how I wrap all of my presents. I just wrap some foil and I don't even have the bow ribbon. But you get the picture, right? Which one screams higher perceived value? Because that's what unboxing experience is all about. It's about creating higher perceived value for the brand. So for example, my girlfriend has a jewelry business and one of the biggest selling points of why it's come kind of like a premium brand is because the packaging it comes in is in like this nice box for a necklace, right? Whereas a lot of the D2C jewelry brands out there, the way they pack is, I don't really have anything on hand, but it's like this shitty little satchel. And the problem is, unless you're competing on price, which is not a great differentiating factor in the space like jewelry, where there's like seven, eight hundred thousand percent markups. What you're competing on a lot of the time is higher perceived value. Because if you're not competing on perceived value alone, then people can buy often a competitor product of yours because like it or not, most likely your product is commoditized. They can buy a cheaper alternative on Amazon that works just as well, right? So what you need to do is think about packaging in a way to increase higher perceived value. And if people are feeling like, number one, they get a good deal, and also they're getting a premium product, most likely they're gonna come back and buy again. So how do you actually get higher perceived value through packaging alone? Well, the easiest way to do this, and this is probably gonna fuck your shipping cost a little bit, which is just simply using bigger boxes. This sounds so stupid, but I promise you, like for example, Cartier, right? They sell these tiny little bangles. Why do they put it in a decently sized box, right? Why does Rolex put that tiny little watch in a fat ass box. It's because the bigger the box and the smaller the item in comparison, the more premium it looks, right? So what I would do is I would look at your courier and the shipping method that you use and look at what the limit on the packaging sizes are and just buy a box that will fill the whole fucking box, right? Easiest way to create higher perceived value through your packaging. Another thing is you wanna go for more premium finishes on your box. So what do I mean by this? Well, if you look at the Cartier packaging, inside, like the texture of the box is not just like this papery type of smooth box. There's like texture, it shows that there's like fabric to it. You know what I mean? Like use boxes that are not just your typical kind of like paper wrapped box. Use a nice matte finish or some sort of glossy finish if it kind of like is on brand for you. Anything to really sell the packaging, right? And also you can also adopt more premium luxury color schemes. So what do I mean by this, right? A lot of brands, what they use is they might choose to use like a pastel color. Obviously, if it's a, if your brand is very pastel-y, sure, use it, right? But darker colors generally scream more luxury. So if you're in the jewelry space or anything along those lines and you're trying to brand yourself as a premium product, I would use darker tones because that screams more luxury. Also, think about how you're sealing it and like the packing wrap that you use, right? So what do I mean by this? Well, some packages come in really cheap bubble wrap right? Whereas others come in this like nice cardboard box that you unbox 
and you reveal another box inside of it, right? You want that. You don't want the shitty cheap packaging because it it's just like, you, it's really fiddly, there's tape all over it, and you're gonna have to use a pair of scissors to snip it. Try to make it as clean as possible, right? Now, this could be a little hard to do if you're using a pretty shitty pick and pack facility, but if you can implement this, this is definitely something really good to implement. Another thing is you can include handwritten notes or printed cards with like nice CTAs asking for review. And the CTA is just simply a QR code that you can scan, right? Obviously handwritten notes, if you're not a small business, I don't recommend doing this anymore just because it's very time consuming. But if you want nice printed cards, you can check out these guys. They're called Slippy and they do personalized card prints for all of your packaging needs. Another way to improve the unboxing experience, everyone likes free shit. Right? If you're a consumable product, so for example, supplements, skincare, cosmetics, food, drink, whatever, whatever, if you could just include some samples to complementary products, that's gonna really sell it for people, especially if you have a CTA on the printed card to the upsell product. So for example, if someone buys a moisturizer for their face, you might wanna sell them the toner as well. So include a little satchel of the toner. Or if you're like a shampoo brand, you might wanna give them a sample of your conditioner. Small things that barely cost you anything can get great returns for you. So for example, if a sample costs you like 20 cents, right? You send out 10 samples to people. Samples, let's say, have a 10% conversion rate. You've basically acquired the second order for two bucks. Whereas on Facebook, they're probably charging you up your ass for it. So these are really, really easy ways to increase your lifetime value, but also just provide a better quality product. Let's talk about content for a second, right? Because outside of unboxing and making your product genuinely better, the only other way to really improve your post-purchase experience and make it much better than the likes of, let's say, Amazon is through the content that you deliver. And most of the time, this is gonna be through email and SMS. By the way, if you're a seven-figure brand, you should really let us handle your emails. So, you know, book a call first link in the description. Anyways, back to it. So there's two buckets of content that you can deliver to your customers in the post-purchase. There's content that benefits the brand and then there's content that benefits the customer. You need to have a mix of both. Too many brands are really focused on the ask and less focused on the give. So what do I mean by this? Well, for example, in the customer thank you series or the review request, you might ask them to refer a friend, right? Tell them about your ambassador program. This benefits the brand if you really think about it, right? Obviously you're basically just asking them, hey, we'll pay you 10% commission if you make a sale for us, right? That's a big ask. Whereas things that benefit the customer would include telling them how to get support with their order if they have any questions, right? Pointing them to FAQs, customer service teams, you know, things like reselling them the benefits and reminding them of why they bought from you guys in the first place, especially when this product is something that benefits them internally and doesn't like, you wouldn't be able to see any visual tangible its benefits. So for example, if you're selling supplements, right? A lot of supplements, it's kind of 50% placebo and 50% legit. The big mistake that most brands make is as soon as they make the sale, they just wait for the customer to receive it and you expect them to take it. It's kind of like medicine, right? When was the last time you forgot to take your medicine? Happens, right? And think about medicine being something absolutely crucial for you, whereas supplements kind of optional, right? So you've got to remind them of the benefits of why they're buying in the first place and get them really excited because the sale does not end as soon as they place the order and swipe the card with you. You've got to resell them on everything again. Give them clear instructions, right? So for example, with skincare, tell them about how to apply it, right? Is it before or after they cleanse their face? What about like the, the how much product to actually use? right? Provide easy ways to track their order, set proper expectations around delivery time. So for example, I own parts of a custom jewelry business and the lead time for that is quite long, right? So we got to set proper expectations around when it's being made, how long it's going to take and when they can start actually wearing it. Things like reminding people of potential guarantees, you get the picture, right? Sending free samples, blah, blah, postcards during the holiday seasons, all this type of stuff, you can benefit the customer through content right? Making them feel safe that they made the purchase with you. Reducing buyer's remorse. No doubt by providing all of this stuff, you're going to reduce your returns, right? And then talk about the benefits. So tell them about the referral friend program, get them to repurchase the product. That's fine as well. Like just have a healthy mix of all of these, right? And you're going to be good. And most of the time this is going to be delivered through email and SMS. So if you don't have very good email systems or you feel like it could be improved, book a call and see if you qualify for our free audit, right? Hope to work with you soon. Thank you guys for watching.